Uh, this presentation will be changing the way the world watches and the world's only end-to-end -end solution. And this will be by Vineet Dhavan, CEO of Digital Convergence Technologies, and Michael Sturm, Senior Director, Strategic Alliances and Channel Management, Verizon uh, Digital Media Services. And uh, they will have the support of Kaushik Biryani for that, the CTO. Okay, so the floor is yours. Okay. Thank you, Deepak. I hope my mic is on. Yeah, okay, cool. Okay, just a few words. Why I'm here, what am I doing? Why are we both on stage? So my name is Michael, like Deepak mentioned. I'm in digital since approximately 20 years. Yeah, I'm one of the veterans. I also worked for AOL 10 years, so apologies for this, but it was a good journey for me. And I really enjoyed this first few sessions here in this, or in this room. And even when Sunil said, we are kind in the Neanderthal here, uh, but this Neanderthal gives you an excellent opportunity. It gives you an opportunity to avoid all the mistakes we in Europe and in the States already made for you. So we all walked into every mistake we can do in digital. Because the big challenge, what was also discussed in the panel before is, how do we monetize? How can we make money out of it? And I just want to emphasize you, look across the borders, visit trade shows where it's purely digital and learn from the people, how do they make money there? A lot of, co a lot of companies went out of business because they never made this learning pass. I'm not telling you to scare you, I'm telling you to learn this. And I also heard it's always a challenge, my credit card. Uh, do I trust these guys when I put in my credit card numbers? Hmm, that's a challenge. But I tell you what, but this stays here, and this is my personal opinion, it's not Verizon's opinion. When you look into the dark side of the business in digital, you know the dark side? I'm not talking about the dark web, where you trade with guns and weapons, and you order people to be killed. I'm talking about the other dark side when it comes to gambling, Ooh, and this adult stuff, you know this? You heard about it? No one is consuming it. But when you look into these two industries, these guys really know how to make money. Nobody is scared to take his credit card to put it on the website of the porn guy. I mean, come on, where are we? Yeah, I mean, I know nobody here is doing it, but there are others who are doing it. And therefore, why are people doing it? Because there's a desire. There is quali oh, no, quality, <laughs> there's content I want to watch. I'm not talking about quality content, that's wrong path I go there. But there's a desire to watch it, there's a desire to lose my money in gambling. I don't want to spend it on alt Balaji because they are getting good content. No, I'd rather gamble somewhere and lose triple the money I put on my credit card there. So, and there's a desire to do it. So, I think the key to success is I need to create this desire. I need to create good quality content. People are willing to watch. And once I can get it, I can make money with it. When you look into the newspaper, world, a lot of people said, ah, yeah, who will pay, who will give me a subscription model on newspapers? Everybody says, this will fail. Times in New York, they only live on subscription-based. Others live on mixed models, on freemium models. It's a hybrid model, subscription and ads and something combined. So parts of the content you only can watch when you pay for it. On demand, paying on demand. So like we saw in this pyramid in the morning. There is a place, we just need to find the right business model for my content. And for user-generated content, people are not willing to play. This is the reason why there are platforms out there like YouTube. So, I just want to tell you, look into it, how others are making it, how other industries are driving audiences to their platforms. And I also heard a lot, people can't find the content. Just watch a little bit how the industry, the digital industry, is driving content. It's a learning curve. I'm sure you will get there quite soon. Okay, this was just to ramp up what I heard. Personal opinion. I don't emphasize you now to go on the next trade show for adult. 
I visited twi two of them, and it was eye-opening. I mean, eye-opening not because of the content there. It was eye-opening because these are tough businessmen, and they know how to make money. They scared me. These guys really scared me. And it was a learning curve for me. And in Amsterdam, they did a crazy thing. People are also not willing to give their credit cards, and people who haven't been, or they didn't even have a credit card. So you get a number, you call the taxi, the taxi came, he gave you a bill, you paid him 100 bucks, you got an access code, and this is how they did it. Maybe you can do a tuk-tuk model here in Mumbai, or something else. Just think about it. <laughs> if you trust the tuk-tuk driver that he can collect money for you. I mean, that's maybe the other issue there. Okay, so why are we here? Verizon. Verizon is known as a big wireless company enabling connectivity, especially in the US. On a global scale, we have more than 170,000 employees across the globe. And we are a 200 billion company. So, eight years back, some smart people in our Verizon headquarters have been sitting down and thinking about how can we establish growth? Because connectivity mobile is no longer a big growing market in the US. It's a big growing market still here in India, which has saw the Geo success story which happened in March, April, but this will not happen in the US. And therefore, they said, okay, the next big thing is video. Video delivered on mobile phones, in the internet, IP, everything that has to do with video delivery. And then we said, okay, what do we need to do to achieve, to get a solution out there? The first thing we did, we said, okay, we need a delivery system. This is why we acquired Edgecast. Edgecast is a CDN, and we invested heavily and built it out as the number one CDN for video delivery. Because there's a big difference in delivering small files and big video files. So we built a totally new infrastructure across the globe, also here in India, for CDN for our video delivery system. Then we said, okay, now we need a streaming solution. So we invested 100 million into building an own video solution but got kicked ass in every pitch by a seven people company. So our own video solution was an epic fail. <whistles> epic fail t-shirts, we gave them around in the team. So we did the best, we bought our competitor. This is when we bought Ablink. Yeah, I mean, you have enough money, you can do it, you know? It's quite simple. Uh, so we bought Ablink. And Ablink is an end-to-end -end solution which allows you from encoding until delivery streaming the whole workflow process. So we bought Ablink, invested heavily again into Ablink. We invested the same amount again into Ablink, so yeah, it was nice. And the guy who is running our division now, he was the founder of Ablink, so he's still in the company and still driving the business. And then we said, okay, it doesn't end there. It doesn't end with just delivering a video out there. We also need to look into monetization. So, okay. We did what we can do best. We bought a company. We bought AOL. Was the cheapest one on the market? No, kidding. It was just four billion. Uh, this was also then when I got moved over to Verizon. So they bought us and we brought in a lot of knowledge about how to monetize digital content, digital ad serving technologies, programmatic stuff. So how can we help our publishers, our content producers to monetize their content. And then we said, okay, this is all good, but if we just give the same broadcast experience to the digital audience, this will not work out because what the, the strength in digital is, I can target people because I know a little bit about you. So I know now because you're sitting here, you're male. I know she's female. And you're both in Mumbai, so, okay, now I have a little bit of information. But the more information I can collect, the better I can target ads to you, and the more money I can make. Because when I can deliver an ad to a targeted audience, I can make, I can demand for more money from my advertiser. This was then when we decided, okay, we need a big data pool. Then we started talking to Yahoo. Before this email hmm, <laughs> breach happened, and they still have enough data left. So we are in the process now of finalizing this deal. 
And now I think we, have, we really have an end-to-end -end solution. We have something to deliver, to stream, and also to help you monetize best your inventory out there. And I think that's the key factor. And what we're trying to do here is we're trying to give you a TV-like experience. A TV-like experience means when the ad is called, there's not this buffering coming, you know? You all know these YouTube ads on TV. You know them? We all hate this. Everybody hates this. I also hate it in Europe. Nobody wants to wait, especially not when your content is played and then the ad server is called. To avoid this, we do server-side ad insertion. That means we run the ad through our, through our broadcasting systems and then we have a seamless experience, which gives you a big advantage in monetization because the experience of watching your piece of content does not stop there. Okay, these are just some numbers. I don't want to bore you with numbers. Just to make you aware of this prediction I mentioned at the beginning, the prediction says on a global spec in 2020, 80% of the traffic will be video. So we are all in the right industry here. We just need to do it right. And we can show you, we can give you some tools to help you to do it right. And this is, I think, the place where I would like to hand over to my colleague, Vinit Tavan from DCT. They are our representative in this country because we all know people love to do business local to local with people who know the industry, who, who know the country, who know the culture. And please, Vinit, take it from here. Thank you, Michael. Uh, go to the next slide, please. Uh, Michael made it sound so easy, right? Verizon went and bought Uplink. Then they went and bought uh, Edgecast. Then they went and bought uh, AOL. Then they went and bought Yahoo. Right? He didn't tell you how many billions they put behind it and the complexity that came with it. Right? Here is what happened. But with this complexity, there is a lot of simplicity. Right? So let's not get to the slide, but let's look at what happened just this morning. Everybody came up and we heard technology is an enabler. Right? Uh, content is king. Uh, but let, let me ask you a quick question. Okay? What happens to anybody who's got great content? And we also heard at the panel that uh, technology has to evolve, technology has to be with the content, it needs to stay with its time, and time to market. I can have great content, but if I, eight months down the line, have a vision to release, I'm done, it makes no sense. So looking at all of these things, what comes to our mind? The minute you have great content and you don't have the right technology, what happens? Anyone? Sorry? Nothing. Nothing, exactly, right? And then when you want to go out and find a tech partner, right? So all of us who have great content, when we want to go out in the market and find a tech partner, what happens? And I can narrate some really crazy stories. I've been around for the last eight, nine years, and I think I met Sunil the first time when we were trying to build out Star Player, right? It was a nightmare. It was a freaking nightmare, right? So what happens to anybody even today? When you just start thinking tech, oh, great content, tech, now what happens? Right, nothing happens, and it's a nightmare. I'm telling you it's a nightmare. We had to sit down with them and look at every aspect of what that technology is going to provision. Who's going to be my, what's my front end? Now, is my front end going to do my transcoding, encoding? Shit, it's going to be a black box. No, 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 I need a separate database for that. Who's going to deliver this? Oh, I need a CDN. How's my storage going to be? What level of elasticity I'm going to have? What if there's a spike? When our content bika to kya hoga? Shit, that's a bad problem, yeah. Actually, it should be a good problem, right? After that, what happens? Boss, content theek hai, kisi ne subscribe nahi kya, to then what happens to my life? I need to find the right monetization strategy. Now, if I have the right, mo who's going to help me monetize this? Am I going to go sold? Am I going to go programmatic? What's going to happen? I have no freaking clue. And then what you're called upon to do is, Vineet, can we make some projections? Uh, how the hell do we do that? Right? That's the life, and I'm telling you, that's the life all of us live. So when we started looking at this solution and making it really, really simple, right? So Verizon acquired Uplink, and they have something beautiful. Uh, we want to call it a magical box, but I don't want to, because it's technology. It's a patent-pending technology which does your transcoding and encoding on the fly. 
Once your transcoding and the encoding is done, it does the server-side ad insertion on the fly. You're protected by ad blockers. That is integrated straight into a CDN, which delivers content to you on the fly. Right? You need to do monetization. Well, they acquired the entire monetization stack of AOL and integrated it for you on the fly. Whether you wanted to server side, you wanted to demand side, you wanted to sold, you wanted to rich media, you got it. And if you don't have an audience, well, we got Yahoo. Does that make sense? So what, what did we finally do? We just said, you got content? Well, we take you live. And I'm going to give you a small demonstration of how powerful this technology is right here, right now. Right? I hope it all works. I've got two colleagues of mine, Kaushik right there, and I've got Kishore right here. What we are doing, we're going to try and show you that even here, we've taken a piece of content, which is a VOD, what content. We're going to take that file, transcode that file, and give it back to you right here. Kishore, on the other hand, is actually doing a live recording using, mind you, Commodity hardware, when I say commodity hardware, means we're using a MacBook Pro to actually record this event through the MacBook camera. We are going to take that as our input source to transcode, to encode, and give it back to you. And if these two gentlemen perform well, we might even put an ad in it. <laughs> right? So I'm going to probably keep talking. Uh, don't blame me for it. But I'm going to hand it over to Kaushik to uh, kind of show us what he's doing. Okay, this happens. Okay, it's technology. Not yet. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a piece of content, slice, encode, put ads, add closed captioning to it, and simplicity factor, I'll add a poster image as well. So I'll just run one command. What happens is it takes the piece of content, analyzes it from the video and audio perspective, and starts slicing it. And this is the back end. Let me show you the front end. On front end, what happens? So over here, this is the piece of content which I've taken, and it has started slicing the content. When, I, when we say slicing, it means encoding the content. And during the encoding process, what it does is it generates a playback URL right in the front. Once a playback URL is generated, you put it on your front end, and you're done. On your front end, your web, your mobile app has uh, the asset which you have just inserted, uh, ingested. Uh, along with the, with the ingestion, what we do is we also start putting in ads. So as rightly pointed out by Vineet and what Michael told was one-to-one -one session management, where we capture the user device from where, from where he's watching the content. Uh, from his user device, we get what internet connectivity he has. Uh, depending upon male, female, we show a typical type of targeted ads. Again, now, this is the beauty of it. So you saw what Kaushik was saying, right? We're talking about the VOD piece of content. We're talking about an ad. It's a server-side ad insertion. It's on one-on-one -on -one session management. For all of us who don't get that from a tech perspective, all I want to tell you, it's targeted. It's, like I said, obviously, it's one-on-one. -on -one. It's server-side, so ad blockers can't take care of it. They can't even detect it. And the way this technology works, it works in parallel to the content. So while it is slicing the content and transcoding it, it takes the ad into it. So when you play it out, you don't understand. You won't even figure out whether it was an ad or it was piece of my content. And that's what Michael spoke about, broadcast quality. OTT has to move in what it is currently to broadcast. This is what we're used to. We want a TV-like experience, and this is the only technology today that provides us that experience to start with. Go ahead, Kaushik. Yeah. So if you look, uh, we have already ingested two ads as well. Now, these are ads, and these are not client-side ads. It's a server-side ad insertion, what we have done. So again, uh, ad blockers will not be able to block these ads. For simplicity reason, it, ad blockers does not know whether it is a video which is playing or an ad which is playing. And we'll quickly demonstrate you the same as well. So I'm just playing the piece of content. This is a poster image which, which it generated. And when I'm playing this, 
you see the content starts playing while at the background it is still slicing, it is still encoding. What I've not done is, uh, let me show you the closed captioning as well. So again, if you have closed caption, you see the closed captioning appearing over here. And this is simple as it is, whereby you don't have to do anything for putting your content and making it live, which currently is, is a pain area, uh, whatever technology you are using. And this is, this is Verizon. This shows that this is a placeholder of an ad, and when I go and associate a campaign to it, an ad also starts playing simultaneously. So what we have done is, we are slicing, we are still slicing a content. In the meantime, as Vineet mentioned, that there is one more colleague of ours who is doing a live streaming. And what I've done is, while we have configured the live stream, let me just play it for you. While he's doing that, we did, uh, I think, a billion hours. 1.1 billion. 1.1 billion hours of content on this platform uh, in 2016, right? And I think we've already crossed that number uh, in 2017. So we need, uh, over here, the live streaming has started yeah, that's, playing. Yeah, uh, us. Yep. <laughs> right? So we have put in an ad. Let me put a targeted ad over here. So I'll associate one campaign as well. And this is all happening in within five minutes where we have taken a piece of content, encoded it, played it live. At the same time, we've done a live streaming as well. Right, so let me bring in a kicker here, okay? So all of us want to know, man, this is great. Okay, it's all working. I can see you guys, it's all happening. The, the important, and I think the best news for everybody here and especially, you know, and somebody spoke about our traditional aspect of saying, we don't want to pay, right? Or we want to pay less for everything we get, right? We get massive discounts here when we go out and build our technology and we go to technology providers, but they still seem to be making a lot of money and we seem to be bleeding, right? That's how our OTT business is running here in, in, in the country. In any case, the way this financial model works, right, is you have no commits. You only pay for the hours you stream. So think of it this way, you get everything in it and you only pay for the hours you stream. It does not make a difference to this technology whether you are streaming HD, whether you want to stream 4K, whether you are streaming in a high bitrate or a low bitrate. Does that make sense? Or you're doing WARD, SWARD, AWARD live. Everyone has different parameters to charge their customers when it comes to multiple formats. You don't even need to know how this transcoding happened, how the encoding happened, because it's an adaptive bitrate. Right? We're taking an input source from a laptop, and we've done that in the U.S. for so many games. You know, one of the things that's becoming really popular in the U.S. is uh, kid sports, right? And that is really gaining popularity. But when you want to go to a coach, Right, and take his, uh, uh, what do you call it, presentation, and you cannot have high-end equipment, then this comes of real relevance. I'm not saying it's going to be used in India, but I'm just saying from where to where we can scale this technology. Does that make sense? Perfect. Um, can we take a question or two? No, we can't. We can't? All right. Uh, what happened? Just two things which I want to mention. Okay, well, just, just two more things and then we get off. Yeah. Uh, so the live event has been completed. And at the same time, what happens is a playback URL gets generated and you get the live event as well as, which, which becomes your ward along with the ad, ad breaks. So again, if you see from simplicity perspective, you completed encoding of one of the ward files along with ad breaks and you've done a live event successfully and it became a ward. And now this appears on your front end. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, everybody.